So students, we will continue with the next part that is C, quota sampling strategy. So it may be defined as a non-probability equivalent of stratified sampling. So there is similarity in some ways in this quota and stratified uh, sampling strategy uh, in which one attempt to represent significant strata of the wider population without resorting uh, to the randomization. So uh, in stratifying strategy, you are going to take the random sampling. You are not going to keep the percentage of sample in a particular way. But in this particular sampling, you have to maintain the percentage wise the population uh, in the sample. Uh, or what I mean actually is you have to... Uh, keep the percentage of population as it is when you are taking the sample. So, for example, if a uh, wider population is there and in that wider population there are near about 55 females and 45 males, then when you are taking samples, so population is very wide, you are going to take the sample for uh, suppose 1000 uh, people population is there in that 55% females are there and 45% male are there. So when you are taking, suppose you are going to take it for 200, your sample will be consist of 200 people, right? Then in that also, you have to maintain the same proportion or the same percentage of the male and female sample. That is what is the main speciality of this quota sampling strategy. So uh, what steps of quota sampling strategy uh, is needed? So first you have to identify those characteristics which appear in a wider population. So what are characteristics? Just here we have taken the example of male and female. So that is one characteristic. Gender is the characteristics. Another can be rural or urban. And then you have to divide the wider population into homologous groups. So male, female, urban uh, or uh, rural and in that the percentage, whatever percentage of male and female in urban population, whatever percentage of male and female in rural population, that you have to maintain into your sample size. Then identify the proportion in which they are selected. So that proportion, you have to identify accordingly exactly same proportion. You have to keep it into your sample size. And then you have to ensure that exactly the same proportion you are taking into the sample. So for example, suppose you want to watch the uh, con consumer interest in a new meal kit delivery service in Washington DC. So I'm, I, ha I have prepared a new kit, meal kit, and I want to find it out that in particular Washington, the why I have taken Washington, you will come to uh, know, then uh, in that particular Washington DC, I want to find out that how many customers are interested in this meal kit. So whenever uh, my research goal is always depend upon the uh, population, which I need to uh, divide into several strata, right? Until then, I, uh, unless I don't divide them into the strata, I won't able to do the correct research. Now, what strata I will prepare for them? Strata means a group. So what group, a characteristics, uh, a group with a particular characteristics that is strata so what i'm going to choose it here dietary preferences age group and zip code zip code is location so dietary preferences i will choose first then age group and zip code now suppose i want to take near about six sample, 600 should be my sample size so whenever i'm taking all these three into the consideration that is uh, in suppose just forget about all. Just take one example of dietary preferences. Now, in dietary preferences, again, I have to divide them into uh, three categories. Those who eat uh, meat, those who are vegetarians, and those who are vegans. So, when I am taking them, all these three groups, in that also, I have to take the same proportion. Suppose... In all, I want to take 600 people as, a, as my sample. Then I must take 200 from meat eaters, 200 from vegetarians and 200 from vegan. And then it will be the correct uh, 
sample for my particular research. So in this way, it will be very easy for to compare between this group and as the sample size is exactly same in everywhere. So whatever compare you are doing will be exactly correct. Now the next is snowball sampling. Now a snowball, uh, which is the sampling method which uh, referred, uh, which is purely based on referrals. Referrals in the sense, referral dictionary meaning is uh, to send someone with some information or to get some information from. So to send someone from one place to another. Now here the information you need to collect. So. Um, whatever information suppose i want to do the research on a very sensitive uh, topic for example the teenagers in uh, i mean uh, teenagers who are drug addict no no one will easily tell me that yes is come here i'm having a teenager who is drug addict no one will because everyone will try to keep it tight right they will not tell you but then you know someone uh, which is a very good of your friend you know so you can take them as one uh, particular sample sample in the sense one person from the sample right then to that particular person you can ask how many of your friends are there then he will give you information about the friend then friends friends then friends friends then friends friends so slowly your sample size will get increased so you can see this is the researcher who got one uh, person previously then he gave reference to the two other person then this give three other person this person give three other person and thus the references of different persons or the information regarding what you need is getting increased it is just like a snowball which increases into the snow, into the size so it is called as snowball sampling right so uh, in snowball uh, sampling a researcher required to start with the identification of a small number of participants right who have whatever characteristics you need to do the research right and then these people will then act as an informants and they will inform to uh, uh, they will help you to actually identify the author who is exactly having the same qualities right and then the next slot will act as an informant which will uh, again give you more information about the authors now snowball sampling is applied in cases where the population is unknown because you don't know exactly then the access to the population of this study is difficult as i gave the example the study uh, of the teenage who is drug addict access is very difficult or i want to study i want to do the research on extramarital affair more difficult no one will tell you so uh, because that is uh, harmful also so no one will even take that risk so if i want to do the research on such topic then i have to go with this snowball sampling uh, strategy one is uh, to conduct ethnographic studies or the one who want to uh, study a particular population um, for example i want to study of some tribes so then i need the information about the tribes how to go to the tribes how i can communicate with them will they help me so all those difficulties are there and moreover the sample will be less so uh, and the next is the topic of the research of study is too sensitive which i have given already two examples now when you are doing the sampling some errors may happen so these errors in the sample research uh, which are uh, there which are again divided into two types that is sampling errors and non-sampling error now in sampling error while you are selecting the sample you are making the errors in non-sampling error those are you have already selected the samples but when you are observing or taking notes from them or you are studying them you are analyzing the data you are making the errors or you are making the mistakes so uh, those are the non-sampling error now in sampling error again those errors are divided into two that is chance or random error or error of bias and in non-sampling error it is again divided into two chance or random error and error of bias now what is sampling error you all know we have already seen that sampling error is the error which arises uh, when you are doing the research study 
those are simply called a sampling error and we have also seen that how we can reduce we have seen two things one is stratification and another is if you increase the size of the sample the error will get reduced now uh, these types of sampling error as we have seen that there are two types of sampling errors uh, which are chance errors and errors of bias in sampling so in chance error this error generally happens by chance so uh, in craving for the sample you are uh, finding out a particular sample from a parent uh, population and uh, uh, it is happening by chance it's uh, right because it is a random error you are not purposefully doing it but it has happened right and uh, unusual in units which are present into the populations uh, do exist in many populations so those are actually the possibility of these types of the errors and uh, this issue you can solve it because you can increase the large number of size or the size of the sample and it can this chance error can get reduced now the errors of bias sampling is very difficult to solve rather they will never get uh, corrected then th th thus whenever whatever type of research you do there should not be never never ever in your research there should be error of bias in the sampling as you all know biasness means i know my family i know my friends and i'm going to take only them as a sample uh, with uh, some favorite tendency i'm going to do it for a particular characteristics that you should avoid which we have already seen so if we are taking such sampling definitely it is going to give you the errors of bias in sampling now non sampling errors the bias which is associated with non sampling error is not dependent on the size of the sample but it is mainly associated with the differences between those who respond to you and those who do not so if we have even uh, seen the example of the in previous slides that where uh, you have taken the respondent uh, data you collected and you said that 500 people have responded only 0.2 percent are not uh, interested in respondent but that can be a wrong uh, data because you are collecting everything from the or uh, your family or friends so for example if you have opened the new shop and you want to take the feedback about the shop to give now who will give very good responses to you definitely your friend your close your family your close friends friends friend they will give you so you will take feedbacks from them and actual customer who is visiting you will just ignore them right now if this happen you are not going to get the correct feedback about your uh, shop so that kind of uh, error that is a error if you are doing a research it is a big error you should actually include them also because those are actually going to give you uh, the correct feedback so uh, the main factors of these errors are error due to observation so if i'm doing some research i have collected the sample and when i'm observing it i am missing some characters or i am missing some observations that is one error error due to non response and measurement error some people are not responding from my particular sample so that becomes an error uh, the measurement error in the sense i am uh, again i am taking some measurements i have described or uh, decided that these can act as a measurement but i am not getting them or i am missing on them the error errors in uh, processing or analyzing the data i am doing mistakes i am just uh, not taking all the points in consideration when i am analyzing the data then when i'm preparing uh, pre i'm doing preparation for the reports i'm skipping some points uh, the, that can prepare the error then error in uh, coverage by using a defective frame so we have already seen what is frame so that frame i have chosen wrongly so definitely i'm going to get the uh, error in my sampling now again there, there are the types in this also that is uh, non sampling errors chance error this i'm doing it because uh, it's by chance i'm not uh, exactly focusing or uh, doing it carefully and it is or i'm doing it carefully also but sometimes it is just happening so that is the chance error 
and bias as i'm i have given the example it is exactly the same uh, situation that i'm choosing only my relative my family member i'm doing everything in bias with the research and because of that uh, the errors are happening and as i said previously also this type of error error will not get cancelled in the long run you uh, that is the serious uh, drawback of this so never do any bias sampling now in conclusion sampling is the procedure a researcher used to get uh, to gather people places or things to study that is the sample and the representative proportion of the population is called as sample again mostly this kind of research is generally done instead of science more in arts and commerce that is in psychology and commerce population refers to the large group from which the sample is taken right and probability the types of the sampling we have seen that the probability and non probability sampling uh, strategies and we have also seen the errors that is non sampling and sampling errors that may occur which can give you bias or wrong measurement now we will see a small video this short animated video explains the concept of sampling and the different types of sampling that are used in research. So don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Hello, and welcome to yet another video series from Digital Learning, your one-stop solution for all your learning needs. So before we understand sampling and its type, let us first understand the difference between these two terms, population and sample. Sample is a small group selected from population to represent the entire population. So when you conduct research about a group of people, it is almost impossible to collect data from every person in that group. Instead, you select a sample, and that sample is a group of individuals who will actually participate in the research and will represent the entire population. Sample is basically a subset of population that is based on the fact that it is drawn from the population. Now, what is population? Population is a group from which the sample is drawn. Exact population will depend upon the scope of the study. Let us understand with some real life examples here. Millions around the world are infected because of this COVID-19. And many companies are in progress of developing vaccines. And then in the process, they are also doing some clinical trials. So they will select a small portion of people from different background, probably age, gender, and those who are infected with COVID-19 as a sample, and then will perform a study on these individuals. Because it's not possible to conduct tests on millions of individuals at one time. So that is the difference between the population and sample. Now let us understand what is sampling. Sampling is a method that allows researchers to infer information about population based on the results from sample without having to investigate every individual. So Reducing the number of individuals in a study reduces your cost, your workload, and may make it easier to obtain a high quality information. To draw a valid conclusion from your result, you have to carefully decide how will you select a sample that is the representative of the group as a whole. So broadly speaking, there are two different categories of sampling. One is the probability sampling, and next is the non probability sampling. Probability sampling. So, probability sampling is based on the fact that every member of population has known an equal chance of being selected. This method is based on the theory of probability. For example, when you flip a coin, there are 50 50 chance of getting a head or tail and if you flip a coin once more 
again the chance of getting a head or tail is 15 50. even if you flip a coin 100 times the next time when you flip a coin the chance of getting a head or tail is it will still be 50 or 50. but in that case you still want to investigate the coin and why it is coming up head or tail every time the bottom line of random selection process here is that equal probability and the independence of events now when we talk about the non-probability sampling it involves random selection based on convenience and other criteria allowing you to easily collect initial data so the main focus is that it is allowing you to select samples based on convenience probability sampling so probability sampling is based on the fact that every member of population has known an equal chance of being selected there are four types of probability sampling the first is the simple random sampling so this simple random sampling is a technique in which every member of study population has equal chance of being selected here the selection of items completely depends on chance and randomness and therefore this technique is also known as method of chance let us assume that we have this population which represents a broad category of people of different age sex nationality and profession and if we have to apply this simple random technique we will select a sample from this population based on randomness and by chance so the sample that we have are from these four individuals that we have selected so these are selected based on randomness and by chance the logic behind using this simple random technique is to remove the bias on the selection process next is the systematic sampling in systematic sampling the first element is selected randomly from the list or from the sequential files and then every nth element is selected let us assume again that we have this population which again represents the broad category of people and if we have to apply this technique of systematic sampling we will select sample from this on a base on the fact that we will select first sample randomly it could be anyone and then we will apply the nth element from this list so in this scale we will pick the third element and member from the population so every third member on the sequence will be picked from the population to represent the systematic sampling this method is different from simple random sampling since every possible sample of nth element is not likely to be equal cluster sampling so cluster sampling is a sampling procedure that involves randomly selecting a particular cluster of an element from a group of population and subsequently selecting every element of a selected cluster for study so with cluster sampling the researchers will divide the population into separate groups called clusters which could be groups of externally homogeneous but internally heterogeneous groups so then a simple random sample of a cluster is selected from a population let us assume that we have this population which represents a broad category of people of different age sex nationality and profession and if we have to apply this sampling technique they will divide the entire population into different groups which is externally homogeneous but internally heterogeneous group called clusters and after identifying a particular cluster that we will use for using this thing we will pick all the elements of that selected cluster to be included in the study stratified sampling so the probability sampling procedure that involves dividing the entire population into groups or strata defined by presence of certain characteristics like your yeah, age or maybe based on geography like north south east west or maybe male or female 
and then randomly selecting sample from each strata. So let us assume that we have again this population, which represents a broad category of people. And we divide this entire population into different strata. So let us first divide this into different strata. And in this case, we are dividing based, in, based on mm -hmm. male and female, adult, elderly people, and the three status. Now we will select a sample from this different three status based on selecting one person from each strata at least. So this is the stratified sampling. So did you note the difference between the cluster sampling and the stratified sampling? So with stratified sampling, sample includes element from each strata, but with cluster sampling, samples include element only from one selected cluster. That's the difference between stratified sampling and the cluster sampling. Non-probability sampling. So in non-probability sampling, individuals are selected based on non-random criteria and not every individual has a chance of being included in the study. This type of sampling is easier and cheaper to access but you can't use it to make a valid statistical inference about the whole population. There are few types of non-probability sampling. First is a convenience sampling. It involves selecting sample based on convenience. A convenience sample simply includes individuals who happens to be most accessible to the researchers. This is easy and inexpensive way to gather the initial data, but there's no way to tell if the sample is a true representation of entire population. So it can't produce generalized result. It is also known as accidental sampling. The next type of non-probability sampling is the snowball sampling. Here you select samples and ask them to refer them to refer you to others. It is also called known as snowball sampling because in theory, once you have a ball rolling, it picks up more and more snow along the way and becomes large and larger. It is also known as network sampling. So in non-probability sampling, we have another category like quota sampling. So quota sampling means to take a very tailored sample that is in proportion to some characteristic or traits of a population. For example, you divide a population by state they live in, income or education level, or maybe a male or female. This method of sampling is often used by market researchers where interviewers are given a quota of subject of a specific type to attempt to recruit. For example, an interviewer might be told to go to and select 20 adult men, 20 adult women, 10 teenage girls, and then 10 teenage boys so that they could interview them about their television viewing. Another type of category is purposive or judgmental sampling. It involves selecting samples based on or his own judgment. This technique relies on judgment of a researcher who chooses a sample based on his own experience. This approach is often used by media when canvassing the public for opinions in the qualitative research. So that is all I have on this video. See you soon in my next video. No. So this was all about the sampling and with this we have finished with our first unit and from next lecture we will start with the uh, next unit which is based on data analysis and more on how to write the report, how to write, uh, how, how many different types of the reports are there and uh, we are also going to see that what is plagiarism and which are good practice which are uh, bad practice in the research so that's all dear friends 
Bye-bye. See you in the next lecture.